This is a quick tutorial on how to, to author value sets in VSAC. Um, first thing you'll want to do is log into VSAC. So um, I'll just log out and log in again. So sign out. To sign in, you'll just use your, your regular login. I'm sure you have that by now. I use the API key because it's faster. There are instructions up in the welcome to tell you how to use the API key or generate it. Um, but you can log in any way you'd like. Uh, once you're in, you're going to have an authoring tab. Uh, you can go to the authoring tab and you can search for what value sets exist. But in this case, we just want to create a value set to demonstrate it. There are two methods. There's a enumerated list and the rules-based list. The enumerated method list allows you to import values into the value set. And that's really all I use it for. Uh, it's convenient because if I've generated a bunch of in Arcs norm codes, for example, using the Elimu value set tool, I can easily just import them in in a couple of steps and I'm good to go. Um, Rules-based value sets give you more flexibility. There are limitations in VSAT as to uh, which, which uh, terminologies uh, support rules-based, but uh, you can use that approach with any you know, of the terminology sources and uh, there are advantages because it lets you use a browser to uh, browse the terminology set, find the codes you want, and then add them to your value set. So let's first do the easy one, the enumerated list. Here's the enumerated list. Uh, you want to uh, fill in the metadata, the required fields, not the OID. So let's do this test value set one, and that's extensional. That just means it's enumerated. And Elimu, make sure you always set the author to Elimu and the steward to Elimu, because if you don't, you're going to end up uh, creating this in somebody else's space and we might get some nasty emails saying why did you do that okay so save that and now go to the definition tab select the code system uh, in this case i'm going to use snowman okay i'm going to go ahead and create um no actually i'm going to use rx norm because i'm going to import a bunch of codes so here's rx norm i'm going to import a bunch of rx norm codes in here um, now i'm going to just click the import button I can either put those in a flat list, uh, file list, and import it in from here, or a text box. I usually use a text box because it's very flexible. It's just a cut and paste. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull values. Here are a bunch of Rx norm values. I'll just take those and I'll paste them into my VSAC value set tool over here. Now, I, and make sure there's no header. Okay, so there's just a flat list of codes. You have to click Preview. Uh, preview will validate if there are any invalid or uh, codes in here. Let's say you have ABC or, or a code that is not an ArcsNorm code. It'll give you an opportunity to remove it. Import that in by clicking Import. They're there. Go ahead and save it. You'll get a warning that you should validate uh, the list. Say OK. Validate the list. Um, uh, you don't have to. You can say Save it anyway. In this case, I'm just going to say yes, because I don't care if they're active or inactive. I want them all. Say OK. And it's saved. You can see the button now turn to edit, which means it's saved. Now to export it, click the export button. To pick the um, value set that you want to export. Um, Excel will be generated in just a minute. So here's Excel uh, output. And just open that up, or you can show it in the folder and open it up. Um, and you'll, you'll see two tabs in here that are of interest. Uh, you'll see the tab that's called, um, oops, it's a little hidden here. Let's uh, go ahead and unhide these. So you'll see a, um, a, a validated code list, okay, and if you scroll down a little bit on this, you'll see that uh, what you have is Is basically actives and inactives in here, which is probably what we want. Okay, if you just wanted the actives, you can go to the uh, expansion list. It's only going to expand the active codes. Okay, so it's only going to list the active codes. So this is the whole thing. This is with the inactive codes. I mean, this is with just the active codes. Okay, and um, uh, that's really all there is to it. You can cut and paste and do whatever you'd like with with the output of the Excel. Okay. So uh, I won't save this, and now we have that value set um, done. Let's try to do the rules-based one, or otherwise known as uh, intentional value sets. In this case, I'm going to call it test value set two, 
And again, the author is Elimu. The steward is Elimu. Okay, that's important. Uh, save it. Okay, and now you have uh, the definition. And you're going to select the code system. Let's pick SNOMED this time. Okay, so uh, SNOMED, here it is. And now I'm going to just do a diabetes one, for example. So let's uh, let's go ahead and search for diabetes. You could type in here diabetes and search for it. It's an okay way to do this, but it's not a uh, not really the best way to do this. Uh, a better way is to click on the browser because it gives you more flexibility. Select the code system. Make sure it's the same code system. So SNOMED, and you're going to type in here diabetes. Um, type 2 and let's um, just uh, search for it. Okay. Now what you want to do is find diabetes, um, a, a representative of diabetes type 2 um, the condition. There, SNOMED is loaded with a variety of concepts that, that may fit your, your needs or, or may not fit your needs. So really looking uh, not really for a representative of the condition. So I'm going to look around, poke around, try to find one representative code. Uh, I don't see anything in the first list, uh, so let's go. Let's jump around to the, the second list and the second page and see if we can find something there. Um, sometimes a browser will be hidden, will hide your navigation bar, so you have to kind of uh, open and close and try to get past the um, you know past the navigation bar because this hides this this little row here which allows you to specify the number of pages or I mean the length of the pages or jump around. So I'm going to jump around to page 3 see if I can find a diabetes condition there. Um, so uh, I'll look around in here and see if I can find something. Okay, You can also sort them alphabetically sometimes that helps and uh, we'll look for uh, diabetes, diabetes, yeah there's one, diabetes type 2 in non-obese patients. Let's just take that concept. And here it is, it, it gets you into the hierarchy. So you can see that I have it selected here, but I can see its parent is diabetes mellitus type two. I can click on that and I can see it's diabetes mellitus disorders. And now I can see um, the parent is that. I can click on that and now I can see type one and type two. Okay. Let's say I just want the type ones. I can uh, click on the type ones, put it in focus. It's now up here. I can add that to my clipboard. Now that I've added it to my clipboard, it's right here. I can delete ones that I have had in my clipboard from before. So delete those. And now I'm going to add this to my value set. So I'll go back to my value set tool. Uh, I have SNOMED selected. I have type 1 diabetes. I want to then um, do descendants of, click the code, make sure your cursor is in the code. Select the concept and go ahead and add to the clause. Okay, and now uh, as long as this is not highlighted in red, you know that it's correct. You can preview the values and see what you get back. This looks good, so I'm going to go with that. But you know, let's say I want to uh, exclude one specific code from there. Let's say I decide I don't want to include uh, latent uh, autoimmune diabetes. I want to exclude this from the list. Okay. There's exclude criteria, and so you can you can click on and exclude. You'll get two boxes in here. Um, you'll again descend. It's always good to do descendants or, or self because <clears throat> what that does is uh, if there are new children to this concept and you want to delete those, you know they'll be they'll, when SNOMED updates their data, you know their terminology, it'll automatically delete the, the children as well. So. Go ahead and add this in, select it, add it into the clause. There's a little bug in VSAC where you have to do this twice the first time. So again, you'll have to do it again, descendants of. And it's not a big deal, you just kind of... Okay, so now <clears throat> I have to add the code twice because of a bug in VSAC. But once I've done that, I have now a full value set that excludes this one code. If I want to add other exclusions, it's pretty easy. I can just, uh, you know, add an add another exclusion. Okay, and um, uh, let's see here. I don't want to do this one. I just want to add another one down here. Okay, 
and add another exclusion. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. I'll preview the selection. Let's say I don't want to see. Um, let's say I don't want to see uh, latent immune disorders that co-occur. Okay, let's say I want to exclude that one as well. So again, the same thing: descendants of. Um, it's descendants of or self. Okay, so you're saying exclude the code and any descendants, and then add it to the clause. And now I have an exclusion of the, of all of these. Okay, so um, so you can pretty much you know add and exclude uh, pretty easily by just using this approach. Uh, you can preview the whole thing. This shows you all of the codes, excluding the ones that I uh, I say in my exclusion. Confirm that it's including all the concepts that are children of this hierarchy and excludes this concept, this concept, and that concept, and any of their descendants. You can then now save it. Say OK. If you want, you can validate it. But um, It's just a warning. You can just say OK and then just save it. You can export it. Here's a value set. Export. And just like before, you'll get an Excel spreadsheet. There it is. And if you look, you'll have your validated code list. The validated code list, when you're using intentional value sets, rules-based value sets, doesn't list all the codes. It just lists the codes that you use to define the value set in the rules. The expansion list gives you all the codes that are expanded. So these are all the codes that I, uh, that I had in my expansion list. Okay? And so um, you can then copy, paste, do whatever you'd like to do with these codes. All right? So that's, uh, that's basically how you uh, develop a value set using the, the intentional uh, approach. Now, SNOMED lets you do intentional value sets, but let's say that I want to do intentional value sets for RxNorm. It lets you go into this editor, but you can't really um, do much as far as descendants of. You, you can only do the code belongs in a set of codes. But it's still useful to use the, um, that method if you're going to be doing, let's say, HixPix or CPT or any of the other code systems. So rules-based, and let's pick, for example, um, uh, here's going to be test value set for HixPix. Okay. Author, again, is Alimu. Let's do it as Alimu. Save that. Let's go into the definition, pick HixPix. And let's, uh, let's find something in here um, uh, that we want to add uh, as an inclusion or exclusion criteria. You'll notice right away that I only have two options. It's equal to a certain code or in a list of codes. Usually you want to use an in a list of codes. Okay, there we go. And uh, now to find them, you go to the browser again. Okay, and now you're going to go to HickPix. So uh, HickPix is up here. Here it is. And let's just search for something like um, diabetes. And I get back um, you know, a set of different concepts. I can expand the, the column a little bit so I can read them. And let's say I want to add all of these. I'm just going to take them all. Okay. So I'm going to add all of these to my clipboard. Remember to empty your clipboard from the previous you know, um, uh, concepts that you've done. It always remembers what you last did. So just delete what's there because you don't want to combine codes that are probably going to be invalid. So I'm going to add those to my clipboard. Just click Add. They're all there now. I have 52 of them. There are many pages, so you're going to need to keep that in mind because you're going to need to go through the pages to add them to your value set. So now I go back to my value set, and I want to add them from my clipboard. Um, now sometimes what you'll get is a unrefreshed clipboard like that. It's, OK, where, where are the value sets? Where did they go? There are two ways to refresh it, okay? <clears throat> um, you can jump around from code sets, uh, and that sometimes refreshes the clipboard, okay? And uh, you'll, if you just change the code system, it'll refresh the clipboard, okay? Or you can just exit the tool and log in again. Usually, you can refresh it by just changing the code system, and the clipboard will refresh. Now you've got to select again that you want all the codes in this list. Keep in mind that you have a list uh, that contains uh, 52 records, and you're only showing a page of 20 at a time. That if you do, if you just copy, select all, and do that, you're only going to add 20 codes. So you want to select as many 
records as are possible can fit on the page. This will all fit in one page, so I can select them all. And if it's multiple pages, you have to go through each page and add and import them in or, or paste them in. So here I'm going to get all of these, add them in uh, by adding uh, you know, uh, add to clause, and now I have everything I need. Uh, so now I can save and export this like, like I did before. Let's say that I had more than 120. Let's say I had um, you know, a lot more codes. Let's just add some more HickPix codes to my clipboard. Um, Oops, didn't mean to do that. Back in here, go into my browser. Okay, we can just jump back to my browser, which is uh, right here. Okay, and let's uh, pick in here um, some additional codes. From this, I'm going to pick something else. Uh, let's see, council, counseling. Um, I have to spell it correctly. Or insulin. Okay, so now I'm going to add some more uh, codes for insulin. Uh, how many codes do I have in here? Well, uh, I have 39 additional ones. So let's let's go ahead and add all these in. I'll add all of those into my uh, clipboard. Just add to clipboard. You'll see now that the clipboard has increased to 89 records down in the bottom here. Okay. I can now go back to my uh, VSAC value set tool. And now I'm going to attempt to add those in. Um, again, if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't refresh to 89 records, you see the count still says 52. You can uh, try clicking refresh and that'll get you back to 89 or change the code system, but usually refresh will get you there. And so now I'm going to try to add those in, um, but let's say that I only had page lengths of 60. So you'll notice I have two pages. So I can go ahead and add, um, you know, uh, the first page. Okay, so uh, let's just and, um, I'll add, uh, actually I didn't want to do an and, I want to do an or, because I want to get these codes or the other codes. Okay, so I'm going to say anything in this list or in this list. Okay, and now I'm going to just select and add those to the clause. Okay, and then I go to page two, select everything, because it's my last page, uh, 61 through 89. And I'm just going to add or any codes in this list. Okay, and uh, I don't want to see this warning again. There we go. And I'm just going to add that to the clause. And now I have everything I need. I can preview the uh, value set if I want. And if you scroll down, you'll see the actual preview. 89 records as we had originally added. And you can save and export it like we did before. So you can go back and click the Save button. And if you want, you can click Export and Value Set Details. And just like before, it'll open an Excel sheet and you'll have everything you need that you can cut and paste from. So that's pretty much it. That's how you use BSAC as a quick tutorial. Um, please remember to go back and delete you know, any temporary value sets you've created. You can keep them in there for a couple of days if you need to, but you know, ultimately you should delete them because they kind of clutter things up. To delete them, you just click on the value set and uh, you just click the delete. And you, you may have to wait for a few minutes for it to actually physically delete. Um, it'll, it'll still show up in here, but it'll go away. Uh, pretty quickly. Depends on how busy the server is. And delete the next one. Okay, and again, it'll confirm by getting back to this screen. And then delete the last one. There we go. Delete and wait for a minute. It should go back to the screen. And now you confirm that you delete those. I'm going to delete this one too. Um, and just doing a little bit of cleanup. Now notice it, it doesn't have a delete button here. It means it's still being processed, so you don't have to worry about this. It'll disappear eventually. Okay. And um, and one thing you want to make sure is don't delete anything that's listed in here that you didn't create because these are works in progress or they've been published and that will cause you know some issues. We can all we always have a way to undelete them, but really don't want you to. Um, tinker at all with those because these are other people's value sets that they're working on. Um, so that's really it. 
Thank you.